What's cracking guys? Omar Esau here. In this video today, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about Natty versus Enhance. What the real difference is in terms of muscular potential using this fancy whiteboard right here. We also will be talking about half Natty. So, we're talking about aesthetics. How good you look. That you know refers to size, symmetry, and proportion of your muscles. Now, aesthetics is subjective to some extent. I mean, I might find Frank Zane very aesthetic, whereas other people might find someone more like Ronnie Coleman or Jay Cutler more aesthetic. That's subjective. But one thing is clear, as you continue to train, you build more muscle, you look better. So much so, we can have a starting point where you didn't lift, that's zero, and then eventually your maximum muscular potential, as represented by 100. As you continue to train, you slowly get better. Your rate of muscle growth over time slows down. So like I said, first year you might build, you know, 15 pounds, then 8 pounds, followed by 5 pounds, 4 pounds, and so on and so forth. So much so when you're an advanced natural lifter, it might take you 10 years to build 10 pounds of lean muscle mass. And eventually, there is that limit, which can be found right here, your natural limit, which is the most amount of muscle you can hope to achieve as a natural lifter. A great example of this would be Eugene Sandow, someone who did not have access to steroids. He you know, lived in the late 1800s, early 1900s. He represents a good natural physique. And that's why a lot of times on YouTube, you know, people will say, yo, man, why aren't you making progress? Well, as a natural lifter, and I see this on a lot of channels, it takes some time. After that initial gain, you know, you're an intermediate lifter now. It might take you several years to make noticeable progress, and that's what we call the grind. So as a natural lifter, your progress will slow down over time, and that's totally fine. Next, we got to talk about enhanced athletes, those that choose to use performance-enhancing drugs, such as steroids. Now, it's unfair to compare the two. Why? Well, look at the natural limit that occurs right here. That's only half of the potential, let's say, of someone that is enhanced. I'm using rough approximations. This is all, you know, relative. But a natural person has a limit found, let's say, right here. Where someone that is enhanced, their rate of muscle growth is going to be far higher than someone that is natural. So they're going to blast right through this. The natural person stops right there. That's the most they can hope to achieve in their lifetime where someone that is enhanced will continue to build muscle and at a faster rate. Now sit tight, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. It seems simple enough, you got your natural athletes at first and then you have your enhanced. We have separate divisions, everybody's happy, we know the distinction. Here's the problem, half natties, these assholes right here, because they claim to be natty, but they're not natural. And so they give a skewed perception of what that natural limit is. They occupy kind of this territory. So they'll look really good, they'll claim that they're natural, and so they'll give false expectations what a natural can hope to achieve. These fake naturals that you see in the magazines are where a lot of the skewed perceptions of what's possible to build as a natural person comes from, where it stems from, because they give those false expectations. And let's face it, aesthetic sells. So if you promise someone they can look like you, look really, really good, they will try and believe you, you can sell them supplements, you can do whatever you want. And there's a lot of upside to to pretending to be natural, being this fake natty right here, because you can sell your image, you can sell, you know, your trust. You get the benefits of being enhanced, looking really good, but also the benefits of being natural, being relatable to the consumer. If there's more transparency in the industry, more honesty, this area wouldn't exist and we wouldn't have those false expectations. We would know what to expect between being enhanced and being natural. We wouldn't set anyone up for disappointments or give them, you know, unfair expectations placed upon people in terms of what they can do. To me, the largest factor that determines why we have so many enhanced athletes, which is their own personal choice, but more importantly, fake natties, it has to do with our perception of aesthetics, what looks good to us. Because here's the truth, as a natural individual, you're going to look pretty normal for quite some years. You have to put in the time and the effort to build an impressive physique. It takes a long time. For most of your life, you're asked, do you even lift? And for some, that's depressing. That's not good enough because they see these enhanced athletes and people are admiring them. They look, you know, they are on the covers of the magazines. We pay them to go on stage and pose. Natural bodybuilding doesn't really have any funding. There's nothing really here for a natural athlete to benefit from. So there's a lot of incentives to appear to be a fake natural. Like I said, as a natural, most of your life you're asked, do you even lift? Eventually, you put in the time, the effort, you build that impressive physique and people will start to admire you, but for the most part, 
they will tend to ignore you versus an enhanced individual. And that really, our perception of aesthetics, what looks good, plays into that, that influences why so many people will choose to, you know, claim to be natural but are not. This fake natty section right here. To put it simply, the better your physique looks, the more people would admire you, the bigger the incentive you have to use. And that's why we have this section right here, and that's why we have those false expectations. By now you might be thinking, man, there seems like a lot of upside to being a fake natural, except the only problem is integrity, lying to yourself, lying to other individuals. I believe personally that ultimately you have to be yourself. You have to train for yourself. You have to know why you're training in the first place. You have to understand that all of this right here, it's fleeting. It's eventually going to disappear. People will eventually stop admiring you. And all that's left is your legacy you put in, with the work that you put in uh, to what you do. So yeah, if you're going to be enhanced, that's your choice. I personally want to be natural. It's up to you what you choose, but what is not cool is claiming to be something when you're not. And this you know, sticky situation right here that we have that's probably brought on by the amount of admiration we have for aesthetics needs to go, it needs to change, the paradigm has to shift. I mean, it's true, you only got one life to live, you might as well be yourself, be your own individual. That's it, that's the video, Natty vs. Enhanced, going over the natural limitations, the enhanced, what it means to be a fake natty, kind of the skewed perceptions, and you know, going over aesthetics overall. If you like this video, make sure to like this video, and I want to know in the comment section below, would you ever consider using performance enhancing drugs? Post in the comment section below, and also be honest if you'd be real about it and open and be public, or if you just keep it to yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace!